But it's that point of the season where a long, hard look in the mirror is much deserved. Long-term ambitions may have to be shelved and more immediate pressing concerns addressed. That look in the mirror has not yielded dividends or good readings for UPDF as they prepare to do battle against Soltillo Brightsters. A season that promised way too much at the very beginning has turned out to be one with a lot of inconsistency. So much so that a win has still eluded them out proper this calendar year 2023. If they are to survive relegation where they're just peering below in inches, only on goal difference are they separated. That tide has to turn now. The winds have to flow in and they have to find a way to grind out results. Against Bright Stars, they face off with a team that has uh, found their mojo and has been good at mixing it up here with the big guns right in the middle of the table. But they could have aimed higher, they could have gained more, and they will feel that points like UPDFs are theirs for the taking. Monday afternoon, it is business as usual in the start times you get the Premier League. A very good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jermaine Agessa. Joining me up here in the commentary booth, John Vianen Simbe, as we welcome you to the Bombo Military Playground, where UPDF do square off with Brightsters, a game that ended in a stalemate the last time out, but did have quite a bit of a uh, couple of talking points. Absolutely. There was uh, that discussion about whether UPDFs um, would be equalizer or equalizer indeed cross the line. So that is uh, a matter that was never settled. And um, for Bright Stars, they felt had done by the result. And I'm sure that uh, they will not be more motivated than they are this time round to ensure that uh, they rewrite the script as it ended that afternoon in uh, Kavumba. Well, for Bra uh, Bright Stars, they'll definitely feel buoyed by their recent results. They've been picking up a couple of good results, including that uh, routine victory against uh, the Uganda regional side, GND Boys, in the Uganda Cup. But they also managed to overcome Black's power, and then there was that draw against Maroons, the two games that they have played so far in the second round. And you would feel that right now, Asaf Mwebaz's his men are primed to seek more points with the goal machine, Nelson Nelison Katuka, set to lead the charge. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, been uh, one of their main men in as far as um, the hunt for goals has been concerned. And that's where you feel that um, Mwanga, the captain of UPDF, has got to have his wits up to ensure that that back line is tight to keep him out. Of course, uh, there's a lot of, of firepower that comes in from uh, this bright star side, including Loki, who is also another one that you feel that with his speed and pace, alongside Ibrahim Kasinde, they are definitely going to wreak a lot of havoc in that UPDF defense. Well, Brian Senyondo cannot count on the services of Rogers Mogisha, who traveled with the Uganda Cranes to Egypt for the AFCON qualifier. Neither can he call on Derek Emmanuel Were, who is ineligible to face off with his club. But Simon Mabuya will be expected to step in in the sticks there, as well as the services of Ivan Ahimbi Sibwe, Jibril Nsimbe, and Frank Iga are expected to get this show on the road. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you think that uh, with uh, Ivan Ahim Bisiwe in, in that lineup, yeah, and of course Jibril and Simbe, they've got uh, options that uh, can try and get um, this uh, UPDF side uh, off uh, to a good start. Of course, with Donato Okello and Ibrahim Wamana in that midfield, they have good control and uh, a shield for the back line. Well, Asaf Mwebaze largely has his entire squad available to him, except for Warren Bule, who has an injury. So largely, he has his pick and choice of who should start this one out and will feel quite in good stature to be able to give it as good as they can. Yeah, certainly. I think that um, uh, looking at this sort of bright side, they come into this game uh, with uh, their tails up. They are not in their stretch like they were at the beginning of the season and uh, they can play a more relaxed game, but one where they feel that uh, psychologically they will come into this game having uh, a lot more in their tank as opposed to what um, UPDF has in terms of confidence. Well, Lucky Kasari is the man that's in charge of this particular one and of course assisted by Okello Lee, Elizabeth Nasolo and Vincent Kavuma. It's a game with quite a lot in stature, especially for UPDF. If anything, now they have to begin to pick up the points as a must. Definitely. And one thing that uh, Brian Senyondo, the coach, said is that um, they've been one of the best football playing teams in the league. And he doesn't think that there are many teams that have uh, can contest that. But the thing is that he feels that scoring has just not come their way and they need to start scoring. And that is if they are to stop um, Asaf Mwebaz's uh, bright stars. 
Well, Asaf Mwebaze will have his eye as well on the possible ascent to the top of the table. And they'll be banking on the experience and prolificness of uh, that man there, Nelson Senkatoka. And of course, uh, the captain of the team, Andy Chambade, to get them across the finish line. Quite an array of players in there that in their own right are extremely talented individuals. But can they play as a team? We've seen them do that sometimes in the season. Brian Senyondo will be hoping they can't do it today. Yeah, of course, uh, he'll be hoping that uh, his uh, side comes out on top. But he knows that it's not going to be an easy game, not by any stretch of the imagination. They've also not had um, a very good uh, home record, that is UPDF, and that's where it needs to start. Their last games against um, Bull here ended in a draw. And you feel that uh, when you're at home, and if you are to survive, winning has got to begin there and he knows that it's going to be quite a, a test for the character of his charges this afternoon well 4 p.m it is and we come to you live from bombo military playgrounds it is the start times uganda premier league updf taking on saltillo brightsters it's coming to you live here on the new home of the start times uganda premier league sanuka prime all brought to you by mtn the official broadcast sponsor updf in the green camouflage, while Soltillo Brightsters this time choose or opt to go for the yellow all-out kit. Yeah, of course, uh, that's the away kit. But, of course, a late change being made by uh, UPDF uh, Donato Kelo coming into the lineup, replacing Adrico, who was uh, initially named in. I guess it was uh, some kind of a tactical switch that has been made very late. And uh, you hope that um, it can actually pay dividends uh, for them. It's actually a bit curious that Donato Kelo, among a host of other players, have actually stayed on the bench here, the likes of Ezekiel Katende. And uh, you could also add probably Abbas Cheyune, all starting on the bench there. Donato Kelo, of course, the name that would definitely stand out as a long ball. It's crossed in, first foray, testing the waters here. Yeah, it was a good attempt coming in uh, from um, Odong trying to deliver that cross, although the problem is that uh, it lacked the accuracy that I'm sure would have benefited the forwards. Um, Nelson Senkantuka and um, Ibrahim Kasinde coming in now from the right wing. So that's something that you think that uh, for Bright Stars, they will always go to try and see that uh, they've got those um, crosses in accurately as much as uh, they can if they're to get the goals. Ibisiwe getting the ball on here for Wemana. Ibrahim losing position here, hard challenge here on Peter Loki. A lot of mischief, not being given a lot of time to settle into his strides. And that's going to be one battle to keep an eye on all evening long. Especially with the fact that today Loki looks like he's going to be intertwining his duties quite behind Nodin Bunjo and not all out on the wing like he's known to do. I think he's uh, got the responsibility because of his work rate to come in deep as well to support the midfield. And he's uh, one of those tireless runners that uh, will always um, put in a shift to try and uh, help his side uh, win back position like he was trying to do there. Well, the bench for UPDF ready to be called on at any moment. They'll be hoping that they can make their impact felt. Oh, Rashid Farid. That they, they come in when they've already caught some goals in, when they're more relaxed and not less pressure. I don't know if it's that scenario where they would prefer to come in before the goals or come in with the goals. <laughs> well, um, I think you always want to come in when uh, there's less pressure as well. As much as you want to, to turn out to be the match winner, I think coming in when there's less pressure is always um, the preferred, preferred scenario. And it's Kaka Omon, the last to have a touch there. The ball is now taken away, picking it up here, trying to set it up for Nelson Senkatuka. He could be on for a straight run. There's a tag here. Just manages to stay on his feet nicely, setting it up for Gift Odong. Can he pick the right cross? Brilliant cross! Locking in here. Loki arriving just on time. But that was a pitch of a cross in a league where we have had crosses not exactly at the premium. That was a brilliant delivery from Gift Odong. Quite yeah, literally was, a gift. Yeah, that was uh, really good. And, uh, if, and the thing is that. Um, well-weighted cross there, and you think that uh, if Loki had got to it, that was going to end up in the back of the net without any trace of doubt. Back into the defense, Ivana Himbisi, we're now setting it up front, and with the counter-attack, here comes UPDF, looking to force the issue. Gerard Chimuli runs out of space, but will get a throw-in for his troubles. Stay it off quickly. 
There's one thing about UPDF whenever they play here, and that's the thing you probably want to agree with uh, Coach Brian Senyondo. They do play a very exciting brand of football, never standing on occasion. I think it's one of the few teams you rarely see trying to run down the clock. Yeah, the thing is that um, Brian um, Senyondo, their coach, uh, is uh, one of those uh, coaches that uh, believe so much in uh, possession kind of football, and um, that's, the that's exactly what he's trying to instill in his charges. And, uh, but I think that he also knows that uh, that would not be enough unless they can also turn that position into goals because that's been their biggest undoing. Uh, some jousting in the air for the ball and eventually it settles down here for the Soltillo Brightsters. I don't know that because the ground has uh, had a bit of rain, the ball keeps bounces in such a weird manner and you can see how the midfielders are struggling to keep possession there because of the way it keeps bouncing off the ground quite unpredictable in its movement but also soft grounds making for a bit of a slippery surface there to keep traction on and for the moment UPDF back in possession Douglas Oyroth tries to play a long ball up front nicely intercepted here by it was uh, Cleophus Fiat and now in possession UPDF once again seeking to raise the issue Donato Kelo in there getting one of his first touches and now back to the defense Chigundu. What they're trying to do is that you can see that uh, UPDF are trying to settle into the game. That's important. Popping the ball up front. Nicely kept away. Now that was a good pass there. Can get offside. And now once again UPDF with a chance in here. A little too casual in the dispatch. Nonetheless, warning bells in there. Gerard Chimoli getting the final touch. But for Bright Stars, that was almost criminal, giving away possession in that instance. Yeah, you thought that they really struggled to clear their lines, and uh, that provided uh, Gerard Chimuli with um, a very good opportunity. And now you see what happens is that uh, as Andy Chambadi tries to clear the lines, they need to put pressure on that ball. Otherwise, um, letting Gerard uh, Chimuli take that kind of shot it really puts them up uh, to being exposed and uh, conceding early. Looks like for the moment someone might have tweaked a muscle in there and that looks like it's Ivan Ahimbisiwe. But the last time we were here he, he was brought on as a substitute and then he was taken off uh, soon after he had come on. Remember he's um, been um, quite um, injury prone this season and been I think one of the greatest undoings for this UPDF side. The lack of him playing enough football has uh, affected the team's fortunes because he's their lead striker. He scored a hat-trick on match day two. So I think that uh, without him, it's um, been um, a real struggle. Well, they also did succumb to the same team that they beat and that he scored the hat-trick against. That was Busoga. But uh, the most recent uh, troubles there, Busoga, Busoga beat them 1-0. Yeah. And at the moment, they are level on points, 12 points. And that is with Black's power only above the relegation area by simply goal difference. And that's something they'll be very keen to adjust. The thing is that um, lo losing uh, to Busoga was uh, such a big, big setback. Like uh, the coach Brian um, Senyondo said, that you, that's supposed to be a six-pointer. And if you're going to fight relegation and try to stave it off, the thing that you cannot afford to do is losing uh, to teams that are around you. And for him, from what he just said, that was a huge, huge disappointment, and he, but he hopes that they can make up for that in this game against uh, Bright Stars. Possession now, held off here by Sol Tilo Bright Stars. Kaka it was actually good play coming in earlier on from Peter Loki. Now out onto the wing, Kaka Denis Omoy. Holding up the ball here, getting Gideon Eto involved in the build-up. Neat passing here coming in from the Bright Stars. He's trying to really keep it within their stride. But you can definitely see that uh, a lot of the effort is geared towards the left flank where Denis Omon and uh, that is Peter Loki at best. Might want to get uh, Nodin Bunjo a little more to that ball. He performs absolute miracles when that ball is at his feet. Yeah, of course, uh, he's uh, such a, a creative uh, hub for this uh, bright star side. He can dribble and he can open up defences because of his good passing range. And then he can also shoot and score goals. So uh, we haven't seen him um, get onto the ball as much. And I think that that's uh, something that uh, needs to change for Bright Stars. Ibrahim Kasinde tries to race forward. And, uh, well, he's already once sporting some band-aid on his face. Yeah, he got a slap in the face uh, from Mwanga. The referee now will hold play to momentarily check what exactly is happening there. Looks like... Uh, Yep. 
I always believe that is one of the uh, simplest ways of pointing a bullseye on yourself when going into a physical game. That was uh, really hard coming in from Mwanga as he tried to push him away, smacked him in the face and uh, that can be really painful. But I thought that maybe one thing that um, Kasindi needed to have done, he just didn't have to run with the ball there. There was an opening on the left side where Nelson Senka took had opened up space. He just needed to just play that ball into his path and uh, Nelson Senka took out big clear on goal. That's where you feel that players have got to have the awareness of their positioning and where and instead of before you, you before you make a decision you need to look at the field and see how your teammates are running how they're moving to see that you make the right decision for the moment he will step off the pitch momentarily still having that ice pack clutched to his face as andy chambade lobs the ball forward a bit aimlessly in my opinion yeah of course you'd have expected him to play that ball into the feet of somebody Instead of just kicking it away. Out onto the wing, a gift to Dong. In possession. Cleophas wants the ball, plays it back to Dong. Dong through the center, looking for Madeira. Out onto the defense, spreading it out onto the wing. This is Kaka Denisomon. In possession here for the Brightsters. Slipping it forward for the Lord of Mischief, Peter Loki. In possession, skips away from one marker but loses possession and the ball is picked up once again. Good uh, arrest in there. And very cow quiet composure here displayed by Cleophus Fiat today. Seems to be intent on boasting that midfield. Yeah, the key thing is that uh, they're trying to also get some control of the game. Uh, that might have been a hefty boot to the side of the face of Peter Loki. As Wamana Sifu gets back onto the ball here. One of the senior players here for UPDF spreading it out onto the wing. Now looking to put more attacking impetus into their stride. Nice run through coming in from Jibril Nsimbe. And now forced to pass the ball backwards. And uh, that's a foul by Dennis Kakaomoya, free kick awarded. Yeah, and the free kick in uh, such an inviting position with a good delivery. You can bet that uh, the bright size defense will have um, their work cut out. They, they, you feel that those are some of the areas where you could avoid um, giving a free kick side because with them an in swinger there, it can be really troubling. Uh, for, a, for a goalkeeper to keep out. Now this is a bit perplexing. Look at how few bodies are being committed by UPDF. Just gradually getting into the box here. There was a tug on the shot there. Referee lets it yeah, go. It was, I don't know that it was enough uh, to um, mean that um, UPDF gets a penalty. Counter-attack is on. Nodin Bunjo managing to find Senka Tuka. Now Senka Tuka wants to slip it in. Looks like it was... Uh, well construed there from the defense to make sure that uh, the pass is intercepted quickly. 11 minutes of the game played. UPDF nil, Sol Tilo Brightsters nil. But you know, in second thought, uh, Jermaine, you feel that that uh, tag by Kasinde, had the referee seen it very well, it could easily have resulted in a penalty, by the way. Because, I'm, um, I'm not certain what you would mean by seen very well. It was right in front of him. I thought that <laughs> maybe, I don't know if, if his view had been blocked for some reason. Because, um, you know, th the thing is that the referee will ask you, why did you have to tag your opponent? And, and I think that that's very irresponsible play coming in from Ibrahim Kasinde. Tagging an opponent in the penalty area is uh, really uh, walking a thin, a thin line. Well, they just got away with that instance there as the ball goes off the line for a throw in. Ivan Ahimbisi were intended target. Switching now from the right to the left flank momentarily. Jibril Nsimbe going the opposite direction. As UPDF try to gain some stature into the game. Donato Kelo having a bit of a moment there with Kasinde. Into the throw. Frankie Iga getting onto the ball here. Can he conjure up something? Tries to cross the ball in. Ivan Ahimbi Sibwe teasing the ball in, but nobody was there for the follow up. And again, it looked like a situation of being caught on quicksand there for Bright Stars, but they were helped by the poor positioning of UPDF. Yeah, and you can uh, even hear what is coming out from the stands. The fans of uh, UPDF were hoping that maybe that was an opportunity that their players could have capitalized on. And um, they probably are feeling that yeah, this is a very good opportunity that has been lost. Nordin Punjo, formerly at Pro Line. Now with the bright stars, gets it on to Ibrahim Kasinde, spreading it out onto the wing, finding the Lord of Mischief. Peter Emmanuel Loki tries to cross, wasn't very sublime, well intercepted. And Cleophus Fiat getting onto the ball, setting it up here for Marvin Odong. Marvin under pressure, looks like he was running out of space. Look for the one-two, poor touch there from Peter Loki. The ball is taken away, a 
Ibrahim Wamana gives away possession. Recycled once again and now picked up by the Bright Stars. Yofus tries to set it into the path here. Not in Bunjo. That looked like an offside. Ball stripped in. The flag stays down. Hmm. Some confidence here coming in from UPDF. On yeah. any other day, you would be hoping that they should have just, just cleared the ball away. Yeah, exactly. I think it's uh, just in their DNA that they have got to build from the back. And that's something that uh, their coach, Brian Senyondo, keeps preaching to these players. That uh, even with uh, the situation that they find themselves in, they do not negate uh, from the principles of uh, how they need to be playing the game. We're back into the center of the park. Once again, Ibrahim Wamana dictating play. He will need a little help here. And that's a foul and a free kick. Does it look like it had a lot of uh, nefarious intent behind it, but still managed to clip Iga. And that's a free kick set to be awarded. Uh, you can see that Fiat Clofas must have got some warning from uh, the referee there because uh, he came in late. And uh, you do that again, you bet you get uh, into the referee's book. Wanga hoisting a long ball towards the 18 yard box and it's repelled. It just rolls over the line. That's a throw in set to come through for CC Kwasisi UPDF. It's been a good start. Uh, from the two sides, you Lively. see that they're, they're, they're trying to go at each other, that uh, they're not holding back, and I think that's uh, the kind of uh, spirit that um, really um, enlivens um, the, the situation at uh, a football ground. So when fans see all this kind of expression and all that, then uh, they get the encouragement to actually cheer on their side. This is one of the few teams that actually has multiple players that can count hat tricks that they have scored this season. The other is Donato Kelo who also performed a similar feat on this very pitch here. One of the games that we actually did broadcast this season. So for the moment, Peter Loki is brought to the ground. Free kick awarded by Lucky Kasadi. Eh? I think it's a right call there. I think it was a bit of a zealous play coming in from Frankie. Yeah? And they're trying to get that ball away from uh, Loki. Neto, Gideon. Launches a long ball up front for Denis Sumon. But possession switching sides instantly. The GPDF doing a pretty admirable job getting the ball here. Donato Kello misplaces that one. Picked up by Ibrahim Kasinde. Picks his ball, tries to get it threaded through. Until the target was for Nelson Senkatuka. It's a little hard hit there. Yeah, but I, I, I'm just not impressed by uh, the decision making of Cassini in this game. I just think that uh, he's either rushing the passes or he's um, not uh, giving himself a um, good thought process here because you can't play that ball so far wide and you think that uh, your teammate is going to get to it before the goalkeeper. You need to play to fit and uh, play through uh, straight into his path, but he's uh, on one end and then you play it on the other end. How do you expect him to get to that ball and uh, be uh, of use to him? Well, there's a real cacophony of sounds going around here. Horns, vuvuzelas, and everything else in there. As, uh, the 12th man tries to get behind the home team, UPDF. But can the team rouse themselves to a similar energy level? They're expressing themselves well enough on the pitch, but they need that, uh, that goal area or that net to bulge before they can actually begin to think of good times up ahead. Possession, excellent here. Picked up by Douglas Oyroth. Getting it up front for Iga. But uh, looks like he wasn't in his right style, straight there. Yeah, you think that um, as he tried to get to that ball, um, he possibly, in a way, had um, not been in, in the right body posture to actually get good control of it. And uh, in the end, um, the ball had to go under his foot and uh, into touch. Carelessly given away by Nodin Bunjo, now allowing once again UPDF to come forward on the attack. Jibril Nsimbe tagged to the ground, and that's a free kick. Need to be a little more careful. Alex Mandera, that's uh, the second holding midfielder or deep lying midfielder here for Bright Stars, getting a warning as well. Yeah, because uh, you feel that um, it's, uh, give, uh, it's um, the incident of giving away free kick in that kind of area is not one that has impressed the coach there, Asak Mwebas, because it's uh, clearly inviting pressure. You just need to put pressure on the opponent, just deny them the space as opposed to fouling them and then giving a free kick in that kind of area. One of these could easily uh, end up sticking. Roth and Chris Kamagu not delivering 
masterpiece in there. They might have to go and retweak their Raiders. So, uh, so a good opportunity that was not really given a chance. Yeah, not really utilized by the way. I still feel that maybe somehow, because of um, the surface and the rain and all that, somehow it's uh, also inhibiting the players uh, from um, really expressing themselves a lot better than they have. Fande Semanda is very much around today. Yeah, they've got to come and witness what their team does. And uh, I guess this is, these kinds of pictures must um, always uh, bring some bit of uh, reminder to Brad Senyo, you know, the coach, that um, it is serious business and uh, the bosses expect results. Well, and that, to the players as well. That instance, Afande Semanda looked like he was sitting on a pin cushion. <laughs> Ill at ease after just about 19 minutes of the game play. There's Bright Sturz, pick up the ball. Sol Tilo looking to thread it through, touch one. Looking for Nelson Senka to come, but nicely intercepted just in the nick of time. Chris Kamago goes to the ground, free kick awarded. Yeah, but you think that again, uh, Chris Kamago needed to have taken that ball away early. Because um, at the moment that you lose that ball in that kind of incident, then uh, you're going to pay the price. It's just that uh, it's been fortunate that uh, the referee made that call. But on, an, on another day, that could easily be a judge to be a, a slight touch and therefore one where you're expected to stay on your feet. But uh, before you end up your complaints, then you probably have considered a goal because of uh, failing to take the ball away from a dangerous zone. Pils Dalaga is the official bear brand of the Star Times Uganda Premier League. Stand tall, straight on. Your time is now. Soltilo Brightsters in possession. Launching a long ball up front. Good touch. Intercepted. Now taken away again by UPDF. Iga in possession. Assesses his options here. Iga makes a sideways pass to find Douglas Oiroth. One of the better crosses. Very good attacking intent on that young man. But it's not uh, an asset that has been fully utilized in the recent matches. Yeah, you can see what Brightsters are doing. That they're pressing as much as possible to deny UPDF good uh, strides into their half. But you can see that uh, UPDF, despite all the pressure that they are under, they can still beat that press uh, by going on uh, to pass their way and do the right kind of movements to ensure that um, they gain um, in territory. Seem to have the upper hand so far in the first 20 minutes of the game. The bigger chances of the game have so far fallen their way just not converted yet. Yeah, that's true. You've got at least one shot on target. Be surprised that the referee didn't see that handball by um, Mwanga. And uh, he let the play continue. Could have been a good opportunity for Bright Stars to get a free kick in uh, such a dangerous position. Slippery surface and easier to put the ball out and regroup. Seems to be the decision that's taken here by Fiat Cleophus. Started off well. Now on the attack again. Donato Kelo finding himself in an advanced position. And now seeking support. Has several options available to him. Picks out Iga who goes for the shot. Not even on target. I think he must have rushed that one. Barely had time to look up. By the time he did, was already unleashing the shot. And it was way off target. Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, he was thinking about um, the opponents that were closing down on him. And um, he had to react fast to try and uh, get the shot away. And in the process, um, was unable to get the right target. Well, a lot of uh, the proceedings in today's game have their fates intertwined with a certain team in Jinja. As for the moment, Nelson Senkatuka goes out away and gets a chance, and the chance is flustered, hits the upright, and now forcing the issue. Unreal scenes happening here in Bombo. The flag stayed down. Nelson Senkatuka selfish and selfish as always tried to set up the lord of mischief loki and what followed then is something that no bright stars fan will want to have a replay of yeah definitely that should have been goal number one for bright stars as much as um, I, I must commend um, him because that was a very good pass uh, by um, nelson senka but you also think that he also had a chance of um, getting that ball past the goalkeeper I think he could have easily just lobbed him and that ball should, would have been in the back of the net. But uh, lucky that should have been a goal for Bright Stars. Well, Nodin Bunjo could make amends here taking that shot. Looks like it took a deflection. 
It actually just goes away, and that will be a goal kick. Question is, how did Senka Tuka beat that offside trap? That, if the flag did genuinely stay down, because even after the replays, I still have no two cents about it. But that would be catastrophic defending to have two strikers able to beat your wall that way. Well, I think uh, the thing that uh, UPDF are trying to do is uh, play the high press and uh, try and uh, push um, uh, Bright Stars into their own half. But then one thing that they're not doing right is ensuring that they mark well to stop uh, any kind of um, you know runs in behind that uh, Bright Stars are able to pull off. Well, just coming up here, a few of pitch antics, definitely having us in a few chuckles. But on the attack once again, trying to break up those lines. Is Nelson Senkatuka whips in a quick cross, forcing a clearance there, and that will definitely run out here for a corner. Well, I'll tell you that uh, this game is uh, somehow um, is that is a throw bring, in? bring back a sense of deja vu for. Uh, the coach there, as of members, he probably expected that uh, his team would score there, but almost the same kind of outcome like was in the first leg, where they had quite many chances and they still failed to utilize them. Well, this time the offside flag coming up against. Uh, offside flag this time popping up and uh, managing to catch Soltillo Brightsters. We're talking about uh, just that instance. Who was the defender on point? By the time the ball was played, it looks like Nelson Senkatuka was in acres of space. Yeah, exactly. Poor marking, you must say. And uh, I think it all comes down to the lack of concentration that they just got their eyes off him. And uh, all he did was just peel away. And that was um, good um, game reading on his part to try and uh, set himself free and um, off uh, their chuckles. Well, Peter Loki trying to release the ball here very quickly for him. Now Soltillo Bright Stars coming together in droves and trying to force the issue here against UPDF. The attack, Kakao Mon, twisting one way, then the other, trying to draw out his markers. Two players just daring him to come forward. Not in Bunjo, not exactly the most physical players. He was uh, as one of those that you can uh, get the feeling will constantly not be on the winning end of uh, those physical duels. Yeah, definitely. But I can tell you that um, for Bryce's, they will be kicking themselves in the foot. The fact that uh, they have failed to convert from that very, very good opportunity that they got just a short while ago. And I guess it's in a way, by the time uh, Loki got that pass uh, from Nelson Senkatuka, he didn't have uh, his body in the right posture for him to actually hit that ball on target as he probably would have wanted. Because, you know, he was running into slippery ground and that uh, in a way can um, destabilize you and that's... Uh, it seems like it's what exactly got him off. The ball is picked up in here. Brightsters looking to venture forward. Talking about how intertwined their fates are with the team in Jinja, Busoka to be precise. The last time there was a victory on the road for Soltillo Brightsters, December the 5th it was. And it came well at the expense of Busoka United. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it was also a very close one, 1-0 one it was. And again, they had some really good chances that um, they fluffed in that game. And they should have easily won that game by um, a much uh, wider scoreline. So scoring also, as uh, I don't think it's just exclusively a problem uh, for Bright Stars. But you think that uh, generally, like even uh, Coach Branson has been talking about his side playing good football but not being able to finish off chances. That's something that um, for the two sets of coaches, they'll be hoping that um, their sides can uh, be a little more productive. Clumsy there from Kasinde. His decision making has been really suspect so far in this first 26 minutes or so of play. Which you could also say not exactly the easiest of terrains to maneuver on especially for a player who is tactfully adept as he is. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Getting the ball back into the defense. Chigundu. And now spreading it out here for Kamagu. Kamagu runs into traffic with the Lord of Mischief and, uh, well, we'll have a free kick for his troubles. Well, Kamaku seems to be quite confident on the ball and he, he ensures that he protects it and draws fouls. So the first time that he's uh, finding himself in that kind of situation. But I guess um, he's also one of these players that uh, has uh, taken his coach's instructions to heart. Just keep ball, just don't kick it away, but uh, find the right pass before you release it. 
Well, UPD are finding themselves with a couple of players jousting for the same ball. Might want to quickly spread themselves out and realign their positions here. As the ball is taken away, Kasinde getting the ball here for Nodin Bunjo. And now a nice back heel finding Ibrahim Wamana. The ball is uh, lost out here. Easily retrieved now by Bright Stirs. Kidion Etiao looking very... Etiao, sorry. They're looking very confident in the back there with Andrew Chambadne. You can see that Kasinde is really fine even with his first touch. Finding it a problem um, controlling the ball. I don't think that, you, that uh, if he continues like this, that the coach will keep him on for long. Oh, Jibril Nsimbe lashing out here. That was purely frustration. And that should be nothing short of a booking. I, I, I also think so, because uh, clearly he seems to have premeditated what he did there. So he And Senor Do, they are giving him a tongue lashing, pointing out that his kind of antics have no place in a game of this magnitude or stature. That, I wouldn't even want to say, was a blood rush who was absolute sheer non-sporting display. Yeah, it was a uh, non-sporting display there coming in uh, from Jibril and Simbe trying uh, to take out his opponent because uh, that kind of brush that he pulled off on the foot of his opponent is one that um, can leave one with a hairline fracture. For the moment, referee just giving him a talking to, letting him know that uh, any other of such uh, misdemeanors on the pitch, he will definitely have words with him. Free kick for Brightsters and the Chambade launching a long ball and uh, Odong was offside. <laughs> oh really? Uh, kind of surprising. Maybe he was actually retreating from an offside position. What? From a free kick? Why would he be retreating from an offside position? <laughs> well, I don't answer because uh, even being caught offside in that kind of incident, I thought that uh, must have been quite a close one. Sending the ball off. Nice long kick forward. And now trying to intercept into the center of the park. Possession dispossessed. And now trying to control. Excellent here. First time shot coming in from Djibril. That's going to be an easy pickup for Hassan Matovo. Launching a long ball instantly. And now looking to turn defense into attack. Not in Bunjo, not standing on occasion. Sets it forward for Peter Loki, tireless runner. That's an extra set of lungs, you would think. Just keeps going and going. This time round, there is no fortunes for his labours. The ball just goes out here for a goal kick. That was good defending coming in from um, UPDF, denying Loki any kind of space to run in behind Kamagu, I think, um, has also done a good job trying to keep him quiet. Because Loki, once he goes past you, then um, it will be very difficult to catch up with him. He's got pace to burn. Ball spread through the center. Now trying to give some magic in here, but I must say it probably was on a different wavelength altogether. Uh, Donato Kelo, not the best of passes that he could play. Because I just don't understand how he could play the ball there when it was evident that there none of his teammates had uh, moved into that space. Holding on to the ball here. Passing it forward now, trying to chest this one down. Chambade tries to keep it in play, and he now successfully getting it on now. Seeking support from Mandela. Loki into the center for Fiat. Cleophus spreads the ball across the pitch, finding Gift Odong. Another hefty challenge on Ibrahim Kasindi, and this time, Lucky Kasadire runs out of patience. Unfortunately, it's a first-time offender, Douglas Wahiroth gets a yellow card this time round. Well, that's what normally happens. If your teammates have been fouling intermittently and none of them has been booked, when you come out that, that manner, as um, Douglas Wahiroth just did, then you're not going to survive the card. Clearly, that was a um, very irresponsible play coming in from Douglas Wahiroth. I don't understand why he was lounging in the, in that kind of manner. It's already one in the referee's naughty book. Now UPDF will have to watch their step, especially with a terrain like this one. It's not one that you would want to pick up a booking if you can avoid it. Yeah, because of course uh, in the kind of situation that they find themselves as UPDF, you don't want to get um, early showers, otherwise uh, it sort of uh, complicates um, your proclivity to survive uh, the relegation. If you start getting players sent over and all that, and also early bookings, 
make it hard for you to play as well as you probably would have wanted. Caught into minds there, Senka took after receiving that ball from Nordin Bunjo. The opportunity that was when, well, definitely going to pass tense there. Chance coming up here, Fiat Key offers. Tries to pick a pass here to Ibrahim Kasinde. Douglas Oyroth there looks like he was caught in two minds, gives away a corner. Needlessly. Yeah, because uh, now those are the kind of incidents that you look at and you ask yourself uh, why there was that kind of uh, miscommunication between him and the goalkeeper. You know, the funny thing about such kind of incidents is that uh, the delivery can end up um, in the back of your net and then you start thinking about the decision that you made to take that corner kick, or rather to play that ball the way he did. Corner. It is here for Saltillo Brightsters to be delivered by Dennis Kakaomon. Looks like it's going to go towards the far post. On rushing players here for the near post. Just racing in there at the very last instance. Must have been a well-worked drill on the on the training pitch. But this uh, time round, not laying in uh, the goods for them as they would have wanted. Yeah, it was a uh, dangerous delivery from uh, one Kaka. They go for another corner. This time played short, and Kaka with the outside of his boot. Looked fancy, too long, too but uh, long, too long, too heavy. misguided, yeah. yeah. And the uh, technical director here of Bright Saltillo Brightsters, Ian, having a bit of a frown on his face. Yes, I'm sure he's not impressed by that kind of delivery coming in from Omon Kaka because it should have been better. He had no pressure, he just had to chip that ball into the city area. Would have given his team a chance uh, to score. Jibril Simbe in possession. Can he gets back to Iga for UPDF. Tries to cross it in, forcing the issue. Very tenacious play. It's been some very good midfield play from Cleophas Fiat and Alex Mandera. Really showing some grit in that midfield. And uh, don't really look like they're letting anything go to chance. Yeah, that's true. And you, you can see that uh, they're trying to do their utmost to ensure that um, they foil any kind of attacks that are being launched. And that's uh, the kind of spirit that they need to show throughout this game to try and ensure that they can uh, get the three points. And you can see Moses Chigun, the former Villa defender, instructing his teammates. He's also done well from what we've seen so far. So is Bernard Moanga, former yeah. Villa player as well. Yeah, exactly. The bulk of that defense, really. Funny, they didn't play together at Villa. One came Different the spells. Left, yeah. Yeah. Nelson Senkatuka trying to whip it in, but the only person available was Nordin Bunjo. And now coming up here, Kakao Moin tries to cross the ball in, and that's a corner. Well, there's got to be some need to work out positionings in there. It doesn't make sense when you have Nelson having to drop out to the wing to cross, and the only available target is not in Bunjo. Well, not for a cross at least. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you doubt that he would be able to contest an aerial kind of duel with any defender in uh, that uh, UVDF uh, penalty area. So you, you feel that the taller guys need to come in numbers whenever they are in attack. Goalkeeper Simon Mabuya seems to have fumbled it up there. And Bright stars cannot capitalize fully as a chance comes up here going to the far post and eventually hacked away. UPDF managed to breathe a sigh of relief momentarily to Nato Kelo. Putting in a defensive shift. And now Gerard Chimuli is very agile in the very first few minutes of the game, but at the moment has been starved of support. And he's seeing less and less of the ball. Simon Mabuya needs to get his wits around him, especially for this game. Yeah, I think uh, he's also had a bit of a struggle when it comes to the crosses coming in. And uh, he's got to time them better. Otherwise, uh, his team is relying on him to try and solve and, and sort out those uh, balls that are coming in aerially, as opposed uh, to everything that comes in uh, right in front of him. So at least in that particular moment, those aerial balls in his six-yard area should be able to stop and pick out. Chimuli attempting to go for a speculative shot there. That's all it is, purely speculative. Ball just rolls away harmlessly. And Senyondo, I don't think, has really seen anything to give him cause for pleasure. You can see with the emphasis that he's uh, remonstrating with here. Probably would feel that his team needs to do a lot more. Yeah, definitely he does. He feels that maybe um, going into attack, they've uh, not played with the conviction that he's needed to try and put pressure on uh, Bright Stars. Can you offer us outsmarted here? Ball played out here. Douglas Roy Roth looking to cross. Goalkeeper punches away. 
return ball. Donato Kelo was waiting to pounce, but just cleared the ball away. And the goalkeeper is on the ground. The referee allowed play to continue. And into the back of the net, Jibril Sinbe gives UPDF the lead. The goalkeeper stayed down. The referee was right on the spot. Question is, should play have been allowed to continue? Well, I, I just don't know if the goalkeeper is on the ground, then um, ordinarily the play cannot continue. But um, it's, I think the referee is within his uh, right to decide what exactly uh, happens or when he stops to play. But when a goalkeeper has been injured and uh, you're there as a referee, then I guess um, you've got to step, stop playing. But maybe he didn't feel that um, there was um, substantive um, injury on him to, uh, get, to stop the, the game from going on. Otherwise, I think you just see that. I think he... He's, he was stepped on, and I think that's where the problem have came from. I think as he came on, the flailing leg was uh, stepped on, and he got himself injured. But even then, you'll probably make the case that that is very slippery terrain, and the way he probably landed could have been awkward on any other day, especially if you look at the amount of time that passed between the stop and the goal. There was sufficient time, and the referee was literally walking to him. But, uh, well, it looks like it is in the fortunes of UPDF, and they will count that in the bag. UPDF won, Saltillo, Bright Stars, nil. And I think in the, on, the, on the other hand, you feel that maybe Saltillo, Bright Stars, and their defense, and the way they reacted was just not quick enough. They needed to have been much smarter. You saw the ball bubbling in the air there, and uh, they're not reacting quickly to take it away, to head it away. And that's uh, what has made the difference. Really seem to pounce. I think the natural instinct was the fact that they thought the referee would stop Play the whistle, Play the whistle. It's as simple as that. At the moment, he's still on the ground, and a uh, couple of the brights does faithful there, spotting very unsavory looks, trying to evaluate what exactly was the decision in there. Both sides of the coins, the case could be made for them because on the other instance, you do not really see that much of the contact in there. And the assistant referee's flag stayed down. So on yeah. any other day, the referee also is well within his means to well, consider the, the fact that, that all was okay. Was, uh, near the action wasn't so fast, so the goalkeeper comes out and then he punches the ball. Now, that's where you think that the uh, have got to react much quicker to take the ball away, and they do not. So I, I think it's uh, the referee's discretion. Oh, now it looks like we might actually have drama in here. We might have drama in here. Because in that instance, we've just seen the referee brandish. This is going to be interesting. We might have to get a quick replay on this one. Now, you think that uh, this uh, Bryce side do not have to lose their heads. It's still very early in the game. And uh, for them to start losing their heads, and um, if they start getting cards and being sent off, could be quite a huge setback for them. They still have time to get back into this game. But also, I'm, I'm sure that they're now thinking about those uh, m the missed chances that probably could have given them the lead. Lassaf Mwebaz is here, and his technical team seem to be up in arms here. But uh, looking at the side frame there, you could instantly see that there's a substitute goalkeeper warming up in here immediately. Question is, what decisions have been made here before the restart of the game? It's just not clear. I, I don't understand. It looked like uh, he was stripped. Looks like he was stripped, and that was retaliation from the goalkeeper. So it's a goalkeeper who, 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 who tripped him. In that instance, looked like he was tripping him. The players apologizing and trying to restrain Lucky Casale. But did he trip him, or he was, he was just trying to get up? Well, we need to see that replay again, maybe. Well, oh. straight red. Hassan Matov won quite a lot happening in this particular one. But you have to say, that was some very silly, silly play there from Hassan Matovu. He was absolutely no need for him to go ahead and start tripping the referee, was whatever it, the instance was. Was it deliberate was. or it was just an accident as, as he was trying to find his footing and get up again? I'm sorry, I'm only going to say what I see. Yeah. That petulant look looks like he knew exactly what he was doing. Well, now, um, he's just cost his team. If he did it deliberately, then he's just cost his team. Because now they've got to t uh, take off an outfield player to have uh, a goalkeeper brought on. And now, that uh, really sets them aback. Sometimes players make decisions that uh, 
coach their teams and you just don't understand what exactly he, uh, Hassan Matov was doing there trying uh, to get into some kind of um, um, you say you would call it maybe some kind of uh, hassle with the, with the referee there I just, I just don't there you understand. go that's the instance referee is coming and intentionally puts out sticks out his feet I think there must have been words that have been shared before because I wouldn't think a referee would just go all guns blazing and just pop out a red card with there having been no reason or reasoning between in the lines of the game whatever it is it looks like Sanon Mulabi will now have to come in and it might be Nodin Bunjo who has to be sacrificed here for the team to get the goalkeeper into play yeah exactly and now it's a it's, it's going to be a problem a, a real mountain to climb when you've just fallen a goal back and then you're going to lose one of your players because of uh, some kind of silly action that they've decided uh, to undertake then um, it's a really really disappointment and i'm sure for bunjo is not happy about this because it, it cost him a place on the team because of uh, an incident that has uh, been orchestrated by the goalkeeper and i think that um, Hassan Matovu is uh, going to, is not had the last of it, I'm sure for coach Hassan Mwebaz is going to feel his worth here. And I can tell you that this is very, very childish play from uh, Hassan Matovu. So a goal down and now a man down as well. You have to say it's quickly unraveling here for Soltilo Brightsters. UPDF 1, Soltilo Brightsters nil. Goal scored by Jibril Nsimbe there. Well, I think that um, Hassan Matov has probably been inspired um, by what um, Alexander Mitrovic did last night for oh. Fulham they all to get have Manchester their moments. United into the game. They all have their moments, believe me. <laughs> Sometimes some of them pick the worst sports to display them. Yeah, and I therefore, he probably wanted Matofu. to make a name for himself, Matovu, just like Mitrovic did. Both of them and their son, him starting with M. I'm wondering. In that instance, he landed with his ankle as the jo the source of his pain. And then later on, he's being treated for his uh, pelvis. I mean, his waistline, it, it, it's, it's, it's weird. It's nothing short of weird that Matovo has just put up in this instance. Well, he just... should hang his head in shame, irrespective of what the conditions were. Some yeah. of that display was totally unacceptable. I'm sure. And I, I can tell you that when he goes back home and looks back on this, and if uh, his team are unable to get a result in this game, he's uh, definitely going to look back on his um, kind of antic and uh, realize that um, he was uh, very, very challenged. Well, there will be four minutes added on in the first 45 minutes here that have uh, really burst into life in the last 10 minutes there with a lot of drama. As now the numeric advantage begins to show for UPDF, but... Uh, opportunity just goes away. UPDF in that instance thought they had the running of the mill. Ivan Ahimbisiwe realizes just how glorious an opportunity that was. They should have made it count. Yeah, of course, uh, I'm sure that uh, they feel buoyed now that uh, they've got the numerical advantage and uh, they will try to go for the kill and especially knowing that um, that uh, price stars um, are manless. Bills Nalaga, the official beer brand of the Star Times to get a Premier League. Stand tall, straight on. Your time is now. It's a long ball is played forward. Looking for a chance here to control in here. Trying to dazzle their way in that midfield. At the moment, Sotilo Brightster is still trying to get their heads wrapped around what just occurred in the last 10 minutes or so. One minute it was all smooth sailing and a pretty even contest in the next. Indecision, a question of whether they should have been allowed to concede. And then later on a moment of madness and now another onslaught after another wave coming in from UPDF. Yeah, you can see that uh, UPDF are now finding the gaps as well through the middle and right into the, that uh, Bright Stars defense. And I, I guess it all comes down to the one thing, lack of uh, the numbers. In, in, in compared to what UPDF has. So they, they are able to find at least that extra inch of space uh, that has uh, been created pulling that red card uh, to Hassan Matovo. That was good play coming in uh, from uh, Iga and uh, a good combination. Just at the header, uh, lack the precision, but uh, good combination play. It's the Star Times, you got a Premier League. It's coming to you live here on the new home of the Star Times, you got a Premier League, Sanuka Prime. It's all brought to you by MTN, the official broadcast sponsor. UPDF have their tails in front. They are currently leading this game. And for a team that has really struggled to come by goals, this will definitely come at a very, very huge premium for them.
question is, can they keep their tails and wits about them and not short circuit? Because that has also been a spectacular characteristic they possess. Yeah, that's true. And I'm telling you that uh, for prices when you go down and um, you're a man down as well, getting back into this one will take um, a lot of um, fight. And arguably understandable, Asaf Mwebaz has faced an imprint of pure fury. And you'll definitely understand why. Some very careless play here from uh, his uh, charges. Irresponsible play, actually. And I can tell you that uh, Hassan Mujofu is uh, definitely going to get the wrath of his manager, for sure. Long ball played out onto the wing. Ibrahim, sorry that he's uh, Ivan Ahimbisiwe, crossing the ball in. But careless defending in here. They are short on numbers, understandable. But you cannot defend with allowing one man to be on your far post. That is recipe for disaster. And now tagging and pulling. The referee says carry on. Some uh, strong challenges in here. And eventually a free kick is given. Brian Senyundo, rightly unhappy there. But uh, maybe Saltillo Brights does getting away with it in that instance because yeah, I thought that so. in there should have been a free kick in yeah, mind. Yeah, I thought that uh, uh, Odong gave that was uh, clearly uh, a foul on um, Jibril and Simbe. Lucky Kasali, Ray, not standing on occasion. And ceremoniously brings the first half to a close. Yeah. I think this is probably one of those that we've actually had and has actually caught us all spellbound. Well, the first 45 minutes do come to an end here in what has turned out to be a little bit of an intricacy that you have to feel for the gentlemen in studio that they'll have to unravel. The last 15 minutes have been nothing short of a riddle that might need a lot of replays and a lot of deliberating to make sense of what just occurred. But in a nutshell, there's a goal in here for UPDF by the Gibril Simbe. There was a red card for Hassan Matovu and UPDF have been able to capitalize against Saltillo Bright Stars. Half time in Bombo. It is UPDF FC 1, Saltillo Bright Stars nil. the second half beckons here at the Bombo military playgrounds and the discussions have been galore and enormous picking threads and trying to make head sense of what descended the pitch in the final few minutes it might take a whole lecture to determine the merits and demerits of those minutes in there but the lay of the land is simple Sanon Mulabi is now on the pitch in the place originally of Hassan Matovu who gets a red card in that instance, Saltillo Bright Stars conceding a goal to UPDF. Second half is underway. Jermaine Agessa here. John Vianne and Simbe with me. Still puzzling over those incidents there. It is the start time to get a Premier League right here on Sanyuka Prime. And it's brought to you by MTN, the official broadcast sponsor. Well, it's going to be such a major talking point. And um, depending on the way that Bright Stars react in the second half, you get a feeling that... Um, the Hassan Matovu incident is going to be quite um, a major um, issue that is going to be discussed uh, for quite uh, some time and uh, how it impacts uh, on the result today. Coming out in similar stride at the moment, Saltillo Bright Stars down to 10 men and both teams not making any changes at halftime. You can imagine the fly on the wall must have picked up a truckload in that dressing room of Saltillo Bright Stars at halftime. 
Yeah, that's very true. But I also think that uh, it's, it's um, going to require a lot of energy and effort coming in from Bright Star if they're to get back into this game. But on second thought, I don't know whether Coach Asap Mevasi and the decision to take off um, Nudin Bunjo was the right one if you were to consider how he was playing in the game and compared to maybe Ibrahim Kasinde. Well, you must have seen something that you probably might not be privy to, especially from the training. It's for the moment, so Tilo find themselves pegged back. Kakao Moy getting the ball up front here for Ibrahim Kasinde. Kasinde in position, looking for support. Looks like he just can't find it and uh, carelessly gives the ball away again. Ibrahim Wamana coming forward here for UPDF. Ball well intercepted. Nice pickup from the Bright Stars. Well, I think I just talked about Ibrahim Kasinde and how he's uh, really looked um, pretty below par. And already first minute of the second half, he's already given the ball away twice. I thought that maybe um, with hindsight, he's a player that should have been withdrawn to bring on a, a substitute goalkeeper as opposed to Nudin Bunjo. Goal scorer Jibril Simbe fouled here. It's a free kick set to come through for UPDF. And the plan looks like it's quickly unraveling and uh, falling to pieces here around Sotilo Brightsters. Might want to quickly come up with another plan. We're talking about coming up with another plan here. The technical bench of Sotilo Brightsters seem to be drafting up a few notes and a few instructions on how to quickly arrest the situation. Free kick, going for straight raw power, Ivan Ahimbisiwe. The ball is intercepted, Bernard Mwanga managing to redeem it here from Peter Loki. Slippery surface, allows UPDF to retain possession. Now a through pass played in here for Najib Iga, tries to keep it in play. That was uh, asking a little too much for him. Yeah, of course, it was always going to be quite uh, hard for him to keep that ball in, especially when you consider how fast that ball moves on that... Um, either to a wet surface so you can see get the feeling that it's still uh, not as dry so the ball moves quite fast there but it was a uh, good um, and insightful passing coming in uh, from Ibrahim Mamana trying to find um, Iga there to try and um, create an opportunity for UPDF. Well a quick look outside the commentary booth here reveals that Yasin Mugume is set to come on here for Sotilo Bright Stars question is who will be withdrawn for him to take his place and what impact will that have on the rest of the gameplay i think there are no prizes for guessing who is going to be withdrawn the thing is that mogume is uh, a winger so he's definitely going to have one place and that's on the wing and that's likely to be ibrahim uh, kasinde but the thing is that uh, the thing is that yasin mogume is a quick player fleet-footed can dribble can score goals can create them and a uh, very clever player so he can, he'll make a whole lot of difference uh, from what um, Kasinde has been able to master. Well, we, for the moment, Simon Mabuya has not really been troubled that much by Bright Stars. And now there's a player on the ground for UPDF, but they do have a chance to go forward. And a shot comes in, straight one. And it's an easy save. Gerard Chimuli decided to go forward. There were appeals for offside here. And the flag stayed down again. Yeah, I think that um, the linesman possibly had um, his positioning well and so he knew exactly uh, the right bearings of where the player was before he received the ball. Another long ball chipped forward. This one just goes straight to the hands of Sanoni. Mulabi Sanoni just manages to pick up the pieces here. Now we'll have to launch another long ball forward. He also has an, a good opportunity to play in the Uganda Premier League. Not had so many chances, the under 20 international goalkeeper. So I guess it's um, also an opportunity for him that he probably sees with open hands. Higa managing to pick out a pass here, and it's Ibrana Hibi Siwe gets onto the ball. Nice one, two, rolling it on and picked up in acres of space. A straight shot. Disastrous defending here from Saltillo Bright Stars. Just allowing Kamagu there to pick them apart. Oh, Saltillo. Despite the fact that you're down to 10 men, that is an absolute no no. Yeah, I know what you're saying, that they have got to concentrate a lot better, they've got to be tight, that they've got to work as a team. But you can see how disoriented they already look, that uh, it's seemingly quite easy for UPDF to pick them apart and open them up. You can see that uh, UPDF 
are running racket around them and running rings around them and making it difficult for them uh, to get onto the ball. And uh, the only sc next scorer is like a chance coming up here, but the ball is put wide. Coming close again, Ivan Ahimbi Siwen is probing. But Soltilo Bright Stars consistently looking like they're transfixed in a Cobra's stare. Substitution, Yasin Mukume coming on. Ibrahim Kasinde withdrawn. And it would serve his team's purpose for him to withdraw a little faster. Yeah, of course it does. Uh, but um, the thing is that uh, I don't think that he can even complain about his withdrawal. He has just not had a good game uh, this afternoon. And I'm sure that uh, for the Bryce Stars, I hope that uh, Yasin Mugume can make a difference. They've lacked that cutting edge. They've lacked somebody to take that ball forward on the right wing and beat his markers. And that's the responsibility that Kassin they had that he, was, he failed to execute. Now Mugume would be expected that with his experience, over um, five, seven years of experience playing in the Uganda Premier League, should be able to make um, a difference uh, for Bright Stars. Now, Mulavi also seems to have... Uh, collided with somebody or something like that because it seems to be receiving some treatment oh i think it was the way that he tried to get himself sprained into position himself. could have uh, sprained something in there but, uh, in that instance there Ibrahim Kassine was totally besides himself seems very unhappy that he had to be withdrawn and now it could get uh, a little more painful here for Saltillo Bright Stars especially if Sanoni cannot continue with the game yeah, of course, uh, <laughs> I don't think they have a third goalkeeper on the bench. Rarely do you see teams come on with uh, two substitute goalkeepers on the bench. Now that's going to be a huge, huge uh, test uh, for them. They will be praying, that is Bright Stars, that uh, the goalkeeper Sanon um, is able to, uh, to continue. In the meantime, for some of the UPDF faithfuls, it's a bit time to break out the champagne and start the party. Maybe coming in a little too early. And then for the Bright Stars. Well, for us all searching and thinking by the director of football. Especially if this is one of those games that uh, they did consider as one that they should have been home and dry without even having to break a sweat. It looks like it's going to really take a lot out of them. In the meantime, this gentleman will continue with his party. Yeah, They're leading. Exactly. They have uh, a man a superior difference. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, nothing. Yes, and uh, they've got that one goal and uh, they're not even feeling any pressure coming in from uh, Sotiro Bright Stars. Pilsner Lager is the official beer brand of the Star Times Uganda Premier League. Stand tall, straight on. Your time is now. Nelson Senkatuka there having a run in with the goalkeeper. Wanted a penalty. Referee not interested. And UPDF giving a quick reminder. And Asaf Mwebaze is besides himself. He believes that should have been an opportunity that they should have actually been uh, adjudged correctly for. Yeah, I guess uh, um, there's probably a bit of uh, a case there because you see the goalkeeper came in lounging and you can see that it was a good opportunity. Gets the ball fast. Oh, and he takes out the player because he actually does. He Let's takes see. him out uh, there. Let's see that. Contact. Yeah. The player. Takes him out. But of course, the thing is that um, we've seen those given anyway. So I guess, uh, but you remember the incidents yesterday in the Express and uh, Gaddafi game. Again, two clear op uh, penalty incidents uh, for Express that um, were overlooked by the referees. So there have been these incidents where I think um, the Ugandan referees have uh, seem to still be locked in that old um, uh, penalty incident where a player has got to be kicked before he gets to the ball or when he's with the ball, as opposed to a point where he has lost the ball and is cluttered into. And yet it's the new rule in uh, the game of uh, football that even when you have um, kicked the ball away and you get fouled in the penalty area, even when you don't have the ball and you get fouled in the penalty area, it will be a penalty awarded uh, in your favor. So until Bright Stars at the moment will have to go again and figure out a way to get themselves back into this game. Pass it to the midfield. Good clearance there coming in from Mandela. Get up to the wing. Nelson Senka took a having to work double time now. Gets the ball played back to Dr. Dong. Dr. Dong looking to whip in the cross. Nobody was in the box available in that position. And that's a foul. Should be a free kick awarded to Saltillo Brightsters. 
season. Very aggressive play coming in now from Jibri and Simbe on um, Fiat Cleofas. He needs oh, to be careful. And that should have been a card he because he be led with his arm. He needs to be very careful because he's been in a couple of incidents. But I think also the referee has got to watch these incidents and uh, be a little uh, more critical of uh, what the players do because you could see how Jibri and Simbe went in and he led with his arm. And, for all intents and purposes, that is normally a card. Long ball whipped in, straight to the goalkeeper, Simon Mabuya. Just picks that one up without uh, any hesitation. Good take there, but maybe you worried about the bounce. If it had bounced just right before him, maybe it would have given him a bit of trouble, but... Um, it appears that he had um, timed it quite well. I'm getting a sense that maybe uh, Bryce has now tried to get back into the game because they've tried to create chances and they've tried to play within that penalty area of uh, UPDF. Well picked up well here by Iga. Sets it up front. Intended target Chimuri runs into traffic and Chimuri still comes out the victor here in that duel. Chimuri with the cross again. If you look at that particular area in the goal, it is definitely going to cause a couple of issues for Sanon because he looked like he was about to be wrong-footed again. It's a very, very treacherous territory there for the goalkeeper. Yeah, you think that uh, for Bryce they've got to try and ensure that they stop those crosses coming in. Before that's... they come in. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where the fullbacks need to really work extra hard to deny UPDF areas to cross through. Played shot to Yiga. Donato Kelo cannot keep it on the ground. Just balloons it high and wide. That's a goal kick coming through. Should have done better. Absolutely. That was a good opportunity for goal number two for UPDF. And I'm, I'm sure that is what uh, Brian Senyodo is, is telling his assistant. Because that was a clean take there. That is he got, plays it behind the defenders. And there's acres of space for Donato Kelo to really get that ball under control and get his spot where he shoots it. Uh, looks like uh, there's a change in boots here for Sanoni. Definitely look to make a few adjustments in here. So the game will momentarily have to take a bit of a break or a small breather. But, uh, better pair of boots, probably with uh, better cleats, should be able to keep him on more solid, firm footing inside that goal area. Yeah, of course he need that, especially after the earlier scare in the second half where he slipped and the ball nearly crept into his goal. They've got to try and arrest that. Um, problem and ensure it doesn't happen again. Ian Mutenda, the director of football, still looking um, quite uh, lost, good. Uh, lost of what? Yeah. It's not happy about proceedings, old. clearly. Asaf Mueba is also forcing himself to calm down. The technical team still feeling aggrieved about the earlier incidents. It's been uh, in their sights, incident after incident, not in their favor. For the UPDF fans, they have the game poised exactly where they want it for some the celebration cannot come sooner it's just one hour of action still 30 minutes to go but to them the 90th minute could be as easily as already done yeah i'm sure that uh, for the bright stars will be feeling that um, had they just fallen to go back and still remain with the 11 men they would have stood a much better chance of getting back but now with the 10 men also that also makes it quite uh, difficult but they've come close in the second half and you think that if they can keep up um, with the kind of uh, game approach then maybe they can uh, get uh, that um, equalizer well, Dennis Kakaomon looking to go forward goes in with a desperation and trying to set it off Asaf Mwebaze is both aggrieved but also encouraged here. He felt that should have been an easy taking in there and would have been a moment to save for Yasin Mugume. Had the space, had the time, picked his option. Just get a feeling he was a little unlucky there. Yeah, you think that uh, he should have uh, gone uh, with the top of the boot, a bit of the laces as opposed to trying to carry the ball the way he did. And um, with the, going with the lessons, and I, I think that that ball would um, have uh, not caught the elevation that it eventually got and uh, ending up uh, over the, the crossbar. Well, once again, Peter Loki ventures forward, keeping pressure here on the UPDF team. 
manages to pick up possession. Dennis Kakaomon shows too much of that ball there to a very versatile and very active Kabagu. And now to Ahimbi Sibwe. Ivan stands his ground. The referee says a throw in for Saltillo Brightsters. And the game is uh, taking up some bit of uh, more end to end. You could see that um, what Price has is bring the ball on one end and now trying to get into their element. And also on the other hand, we see that um, it's happening for UPDF. Well, Rogers Adrico is now brought in in the place of Jibril Nsimbe. And we also do get to see Che Yune coming in here. That is Abbas Che Yune coming into the game. And he takes the place of Donato Okelo. Yeah, you can see that uh, his um, Brian Nsenyo, uh, the coach of uh, UPDF, has uh, decided to bring in uh, midfielders. I guess uh, the purpose is to add more solidity in that uh, midfield to deny uh, Bright Stars any uh, room to maneuver and also breaking them down easy and getting close to his uh, defense area. Abbas Cheyune's first contribution to the game is to lash out with an elbow. <laughs> He'll need to consider himself lucky. He doesn't get an instant booking there. That's Andy Chambande. That's the ball. Teased back here for him by Kaka. Dennis Omoy. Crossing. But, uh, repelled instantly. Goes out and that's a throw in. Set to come through here for Brian Sturz. I guess that we now picked up a bit of confidence now. And uh, they seem to have forgotten that uh, they are manless and they are playing a lot better than they did uh, at the beginning of the second half. Physical duel here. The ball is kept in or did it across the line already. Kamagu, not wasting any time. Quick to get that one away. And now, battle in the midfield. The eventual referee says that was a foul. I don't think that they can be any major complaints from Fiat there because he had been beaten by a bus journey. And uh, all he did was to, to try and uh, clip his uh, feet. moments that you feel that uh, EPDF in the set pieces are also going to try and make it count. Distance. Oh, attempting to test out the goalkeeper there. Not a bad idea. I don't think anybody expected it. Yeah, not a, not a bad idea at all. And you thought that uh, with uh, the right um, amount of uh, pressure on that ball and given good direction, then it can uh, easily be a problem for the goalkeeper to handle. And the Chambade. Plays the ball out here once again for Gideon Eto. Back into the centre for Andy. Plays the ball backwards, finding the goalkeeper, Sanoni. Decides to play a very risky game. So Timo Brightsters trying to go for a man-to-man -man approach here. Negate. And try to negate the one-man disadvantage, but very risky play. Yeah, you can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to get... Um, UPDF to come and mark them so that they can leave some players isolated and free uh, to give them uh, that extra advantage of uh, trying to find uh, some space in behind. And I think that uh, that last pass that came in from Eto was just uh, lacking in uh, proper direction. Hefty clearance. Now a long ball launched up front. Ivan Ahimbi Sibu, but this time he is on his own. Decides to go for it. Takes the shot. Well blocked by the captain, Andy Chambade. And uh, hasty drop back here from Saltillo Brightsters prevents that ball from rolling any further up front. Possession. UPDF. Still holding on to the ball now, assessing their options. Once again, Saltillo Brightsters in that transfixed look. As one would be in front of a Cobra stair. But the ball just goes away. Ivan Ahimbi Sibwe not able to get to the ball. Some very good work once again put in here by Frank Eager. Yeah, I think he's done quite well. He got from the word go, he's uh, been now uh, quite um, handful for this uh, Bright Stars defense. And I think he's one of those players that you could say has uh, provided a little bit of imagination for uh, UPDF. Each time that he has had the ball, he's created something that has um, given them hope that maybe they could um, score a goal. 25 minutes and counting. It's UPDF 1. So Tilo Bright stirs nil. Goal scorer at the Jibril Simbe. Already, Jibril Simbe already withdrawn. The Chambade there. Just uh, having a knock that left him a little sore. 
That's a free kick awarded to the Brightsters. Yeah, that kind of free kick that doesn't even clear the first line of defense is not good enough. And maybe instead of kicking it long, he should have started the slow build up process with a, a teammate that was uh, much closer to, to him. Played in the area, trying to knock the ball around them. This is Adrico. Adrico now drifts the ball out onto the wing once again. Ivan Ahimbi Sibwe. This time marked and a cross coming in. Finds the right player, but not the right uh, technique that he applies there. There's uh, Peter Loki now getting onto the ball. Emmanuel Peter Loki gets past one man, drifts past the second. Peter Loki taking a while to make his decision, and all that hard work goes to waste with one wrong pass. Yeah, again, I thought that that pass was very casual from Peter Loki. And uh, maybe also the other problem is that his op op uh, options are prone. His teammates were not opening up the field to try and uh, create space where he could pass that ball. Ball seamlessly through the center. Nice pass, getting it on to Ivan Ahimbisibu once again, who teases it into acres of space for Abbas Cheyune. He's waiting for the very final second there to try and cut back from uh, the byline. And Brian Senyondo is not happy about that particular pass. Probably insisting they should have played it in a little more close quarters. Both coaches heavily animated. And uh, Asaf Mwebaz's glance at his wristwatch say he tells the entire story. Yeah, of course, uh, he's feeling that uh, the time is running so fast. They do not have a lot of it. And they will need uh, to act fast enough to try and get back into this game. Because um, the longer it takes before they get an, an, a goal, then the more confidence that UPDF get and then they will start drawing and dropping back into defense to play a much tighter defense and that's this is at the time when you feel that uh, Bright Stars have got to also try and um, capitalize. But you get the feeling Bright Stars have uh, done themselves a big injustice as there's a good nutmeg there coming in from Nelson Senkatuka freeing the ball up into space finding Emmanuel Peter Loki who is in acres of space can he make the right decision goes for the first time cross Nelson Senkatuka arriving late the ball just whistles away. It was a good opportunity there. Brilliant opportunity. They'll need to craft out a few more of those, but they also need to keep an eye on that uh, left back position. They've given way too much space to Ibrahim Ahimbisi when he keeps having to peg them back. Yeah, but, uh, the, the thing is that, uh, first and foremost, I just don't understand. Loki, you know that you do, not, you do not have the numbers in that penalty area. Why do you just send that cross in? Wait, pull the ball back. See your teammates that are making a late run and then play the ball behind the defenders. And so that you give your, your uh, teammates a chance to get to that ball. But he just crossed the ball, hoping that somebody would run and latch onto it. But he could see that his teammates were behind. Trying to use the physical advantage here take on Chris Kabagu. He loses possession there and to throw in set to come through for Brightsters. Throw in coming up. The referee Ajin Kamagu to keep his uh, disposition pretty mellow. Throw in coming up. So Tilo Brightsters. 20 minutes left to play. Instant flick in once again. Simon Mabuya had no two ideas where that was heading. But again, another cross that is a hope that someone will magically appear and be able to put the ball to the back of the net. But well, the bottom line is that uh, Bright Stars, they've got nothing to lose now. They've got to throw bodies into that penalty area. And that's the only way they're going to have um, a bigger sample size of uh, players that can latch onto that ball. But if you have just two and you're hoping that uh, the two are going to contest against five for that ball, then I think um, you're fooling yourselves. Play back. Picked up here in the defense. Chikundu to Mwanga. Spreading title to the wing for Douglas Oyroth. 20 minutes left to play. Your PDF still leading by that uh, solitary goal. Now played away to Ivan Ahimbisiwe. Ventures forward. Has Kamagu as an option. Opts not to utilize that. Tried to play it there, but that was careless play. I think he said the target was a Drico. Ball was just hacked away. Brian Senyondo there looking very disappointed with that particular pass there. And how there could be a spell of bother. Chigundo playing into some uh, wrong play. For a moment there, it sounded like the whistle had gone. Yeah, I think it was a fan in the stands that decided to blow to 
because that's a bit of confusion. Now you can see the reaction of uh, Bright Stars. They, they take so long to join in the attack. And you're not going to have two players, three against six, like you see in that uh, final third. And that's where I, you feel that the shortcoming is, that they do not get numbers into that uh, UPDFF. And if, for as long as it remains like that, then UPDF will be very happy. On the attack, Adrico looking to slip in a through pass, and it just will not go. Good play coming in from Gideon. Played forward. Nelson Senka took her inviting. Dennis Kakaomoy to make a run in, and that was a straight show. That will definitely be a booking for Chigundu. Oh, it was needless. You have the numerical advantage. You know that you can still have him on pace, and there are options behind. Why would you go in deliberately with your mind made up for a shoulder badge that you know is going to get you sanctioned? Well, I think he, he realized that he couldn't um, uh, beat uh, Kaka in, a, in um, a foot race, so he decided to just uh, shrug him off. And uh, because I know Chigun is not the quickest of, def of defenders, so he had to do what he had to do. Ricky coming up. Freaky careful, Sultilo Bright Stars might be an opportunity for them to get uh, some bodies forward. They definitely need to have bodies in that penalty area because that's the only way that they're going to have a sudden chance of uh, scoring. And I think that they've just listened that they've got some bodies really. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they need to have numbers there. Yassin Mugume is the man said to deliver this one. Delivers in a good ball and a chance coming up here for Senka to catch chance straight to the goalkeeper. Even with all those opportunities, even in all those instances, still Sol Tilo cannot make it count. This time, Nelson Senka Tuka might be suspect there. Brilliantly hoisted in ball. Attempted to get it back here. Oof. He should have done better. Yeah, I thought that that was a good opportunity. He wanted to get them back into this game. And uh, the header coming in uh, from uh, Odong was uh, just not uh, strong enough to beat the goalkeeper. Defender's header? Yeah, no, I thought the defender should actually be heading the ball uh, quite um, standing with uh, a lot of uh, energy to, to take it away because he defends Ma balls to take them away. That was, should have been an equalizer for him. Oh, must say, in that instance, it needed a striker's instinct, <laughs> a coach's instinct, to have preferred not yeah, heading possibly. it straight to the goalkeeper. Yeah, possibly. 73 minutes, a free kick now to UPDF. He's had to launch it towards the far post. It's headed out. That should be a corner. 73 minutes of the game played. Pils Nalaga is the official beer brand of the Star Times Uganda Premier League. Stand tall, stride on. Your time is now. Corner kick coming up here for UPDF. And Ibrahim Wamana, who we haven't seen a lot in the second half. Did influence proceedings quite a lot in the first. Uh, yeah, he's really been quiet. He's really been quiet. I guess um, he also had the competition in that midfield from right stars. Chance coming up here. Scramble in the box area and eventually Sanon manages to get onto the ball. There were appeals for a penalty in there. It was a real scramble, but the referee gives the goalkeeper of Bright Stars the benefit of the doubt. Soltilo managed to get away with it. Kaka, Dennis Omoy. Drifting past his marker, and he just to launch a long ball up front. Two players only available there. That is Senka Tuka and Loki. Now this is Gideon. He tries to pass the ball forward to Omo. It's just a poor pass in the end. He scores out here for a throw in. And he just uh, passes the ball into touch instead. I thought that if he, if he had a chance of playing it back into to his uh, team and had more space. Oh, now there was uh, a possibility for a penalty if you watch this. As because uh, he was clipped there by Fiat, that's Abbas Chene, he was clipped by Fiat. And that could have easily been a penalty for sure. Goalkeeper doing just enough in that instance. If he had failed to get his hands instantly on that ball, then there would have been absolutely no doubt in the referee's mind. But in that instance, the clip negated by the fact that uh, the in this instance, the, ball, the goalkeeper reacted faster, I think managed to save Soltilo Bright Stars in that instance. Yeah, but it um, could have easily been uh, more trouble for them. But now with, of course, 15 minutes uh, left on the clock, I'm sure that uh, UPDF will be thinking of um, how to keep possession, try to hide the ball away from uh, Bright Stars. 
Long ball forward. Turn the target there, Chris Kabagu. They just get into a shopping match, and uh, that will be a goal kick. That was good defending from uh, Omoin Kaka to try and deny Kamaku any space of um, getting to that ball. I thought that um, by and large Kaka has uh, had um, a good second half, has delivered some really good crosses to his teammates, just that um, they failed to pounce on them. But a lot of indecision here being witnessed by Saltillo Brightsters as Kaka gets onto the ball. Getting it on to Peter Loki. Cannot get past Kamagu, who has also been in sublime form today. Kamagu looking to skip his marker. Gideon, no two cents about that, deciding to come in. No guns blazing at all. Just kept to sweep out his marker. And gives away a throw in. Yeah, let's see, he keeps uh, UPDF at bay. They were trying to go for some bit of one onslaught there, as you saw there. Kamagu his runs. Gideon just uh, stopped him in his tracks. Long launch into the box area, straight to the hands of Sanun Nabi. No worries there. Manages to clutch the under-20 international. Watching a long ball forward. Tomorrow, action continues in the start times. You got a Premier League, a trip to Luzira. As the prison wardens Maroons Football Club will get to host the Congolo Arua Hill, who, for one reason or another, I believe have punched slightly below their weight this season. Yeah, we expected quite a lot from them this season, but uh, looking back at how well they performed last season, but um, somehow they've uh, struggled. I think it has had coincided with the fact that they lost some key players. Well, some clumsy play here, allowing Omon Kaka to latch on the ball, and unfortunately just goes to the ground of his own volution. I think uh, he's failed to stay on his feet. Instances there that could have merited something else. And now Nelson Senka took a fouling. It's a free kick awarded here. I think it was a bit of desperate play from Nelson Seca to try to retrieve the ball after they had lost it earlier from that quick break that uh, they had conjured up. I'm sure this is um, really running socks off. They've really tried so hard to get back into this game, but um, as their story has been this season, the scoring has been quite uh, difficult. Real pain. A chance coming up here for UPDF, but straight to the goalkeeper. And he will pick those up any day to launch a long ball forward for UPDF they seem to be now playing the waiting game they know that Bright Stars cannot contain possession for over seven seconds hardly does it happen and they snatch the ball and get a chance to venture forward once again Abbas Cheyune possession Yiga now to Ibrahim Wamana tries to split a pass in here still left to roll out and that's still a throw in for UPDF yeah, this is exactly what they will need to ease the pressure, to cool the tempo and really suck the life out of um, any kind of uh, intent that uh, Bryce has been. Now in acres of space and a chance to cross and a free header. And it just goes away, but so till Bright Stars had switched off in that instance. All the defenders going to absolute slumberland. Let's look at that instance. Free header, oh my goodness. Poor, poor defending here. Nobody closing down the original cross. And in the end, it had nearly done acres of damage. Ivan Ahimbi Sibwe will go home wondering if he needs to change his boots. Because today, it's just not been his day. With so many opportunities and still no name on the score sheet. Yeah, I think that uh, looking at his season entirely, it has also not been a good one in as far as scoring is concerned. You can compare his season's performance to what we saw last season in the 2021-2022 season where you feel that uh, he was so efficient and um, whenever he was in uh, that penalty area. Drift out in here, losing possession. Now it's four against three and a chance here. Yiga dribbles past the keeper and still puts it wide. That was a sitter. If any ever, Iga should have put that into the back of the net. Did everything right. And so Tilo Bright Stars just escaped by the skin of that. They've just been given a get out of free jail card. That 
should have been made to pay. Well, the thing is that uh, what he just did, he just delivered for Bright Stars. He just kept them off the hook. I thought that uh, with that kind of incident and that kind of opportunity, you just uh, put the, the last nail into the coffin of Bright Stars. He just he didn't do that. Now that gives uh, Bright Stars uh, a second chance to life. Just coming up here, Senka Tuka takes the shot and it's momentarily blocked or brought back in. And just coming up here and he balloons it wide. Would you believe it? Just like we had in the first 10 minutes of the first half, the last 10 minutes of the first half, Asaf Mwebaze cannot believe that for his most prolific striker of a half a century of goals in his bag, that probably would have been one of the most important they could get and he did not execute. Well, the thing is that uh, we're just talking about uh, UPDF and the chance that they missed. Nelson Senkatuka should have put that one in the back of the net and then he gets a second bite to the cherry. And you think that if the ball is to land to anybody that you think that would score, it has got to be him. And he does almost everything right, but just the finishing uh, lets him down. What a glorious opportunity here for the Salt Hill Bright Stars and Clearly. he lazes that. Clearly. That should Not have been the equalizer. Get a better opportunity. Alex Mandera is the man that is withdrawn. Amis Muonge comes on for the final few minutes of the game. Just like there's a quick change as well here. Rashid Faridi is set to come onto the pitch. And it looks like it will be Ivan Ahimbisiwe, who has uh, not been very prolific today, that will be withdrawn. Yeah, I think that uh, he's um, pretty um, put in a shift and um, it's probably now getting a bit uh, jaded here. So bring on some fresh legs, somebody that can um, come in and um, look uh, to, to run this uh, Bright Stars defense rugged is Faridi and I think that that's the whole idea is a quick player it's a clever player and one that you think that um, can create uh, some more scoring opportunities uh, for UPDF looks like uh, shades of deja vu as again the goalkeeper Mabuya is now on the ground this time round final 10 minutes Senkatuka coming very close he'll know just how Nearly, he rescued a point there for his team. But, uh, it's one of those instances where you can't allow the situation to dwell too much on your mind. Just put it out of the way and carry on. But that will definitely have him stinging. He should have scored for sure. Just look at that. Takes off the defender. That's a dagger so worth. And then the goalkeeper does a good job. Simon Mabuya, you've got to give him credit. But then that opportunity, it should be in the back of the net. And uh, Nelson Senka took, I'm sure, will uh, not have a good night's sleep if um, this game ends the way it is. And he remembers his opportunities that um, he has had uh, this uh, evening. Well, Fiat Cleophis taking up too much time, but ultimately manages to get the ball passed forward. On the attack, Sotilo Brightsters are running here. Gideon a bit of uh, a shock in the midriff but uh, he's benefit there with a the free kick at least and once again Saltillo Bright Stars will look to put bodies forward Piling numbers up front it's now all hands on deck six minutes left to play for if it is, it be any happier than they are right now if it just stays like this it will be a job well done and they all need the three points as this as the coach said before the beginning of the game but it's important that they can uh, register three points in this game chance here to battle for possession once again Sotilo bright stirs have to pull back and defend in the instance the ball is now picked up here Gaddafi sorry that is a basche unit gets the ball on nice touch it to the middle Wamana Chasing the ball once again. A swift turn in play. Kaka Omoni tucking in. Getting the ball now to Emmanuel Peter Loki. And that's a foul. He's already on a yellow card. That's a second yellow. And he will get his marching orders. Red card for Chigundu. Yeah, no question about that. And he cannot contest that. Clearly, what he did there was um, real, real uh, poor defending. Because um, you don't have to do what he did. You just need to ensure that... Um, you do not allow your opponent to get that uh, foot race on you. And he just held him back. That was uh, poor defending, clearly. And he knew what was coming. 
and I was going in to apologize, but he knew what, he, what was coming. And uh, Kasadri had no choice. He had to send him off. So it's uh, 10 against 10. Five minutes of play left. Now you can imagine that uh, Bryce Stars will feel that uh, they've got an opportunity to actually put pressure on this UPDF defense and um, possibly get a goal. End of the game here for Moses Chigundu. Red card, and now it's back to equal footing. Soltilo Bright Stars looking to press. Ball whipped in. Not exactly a very good one. And Nelson Senka to Kainekas of Spice hits the upright. Black stays down. Ooh la la. Another brilliant opportunity. Sankatuka is bewildered. Has no true ideas of what just happened there. Yeah, I think that uh, he, what he's going through his mind right now is that maybe it's just not meant to be because he's got good opportunities, he's got good movement. Just look at that. And that ball is played in on his own side. And um, he's got an opportunity to just put the ball in the back of the net. The goalkeeper has no chance getting that ball. And just look at the toe and how he picks up that header and just uh, guides the ball into the path of uh, Nelson Sekatuka. And that should be the equaliser. Well, for he sure. did everything right and it just wasn't meant to be. 87th right. minute of the game, UPDF 1, Soltilo Bright Stars nil. Two red cards in the game. Moses Chigundu off the pitch. Right there on your pictures, uh, he heads to the dressing room where there should already be another culprit in there. That is uh, Hassan Matobu who picked up a red card earlier on in the first 45 minutes of the game. It's the start times again a Premier League. It's coming to you live here on Sanyuka Prime. And it's all brought to you by MTN, the official broadcast sponsor. It looks like there'll be need for medical attention here to Chris Kamago, who has had a very good game, but for the moment, looks a little dazed. Yeah, I guess uh, he collided uh, with an opponent and um, he's got a bit of uh, concussion or maybe something like that. But you just look at that incident that uh, provided Bright Stars with uh, that scoring opportunity. And that's a position where Moses Chigudu has uh, been positioned for much of the game. Once again, Soltilo have a chance to try and test out UPDF before they can quickly conform to their new setting. And that's a goal kick this time. It's a very good defending coming in from Douglas O'Rourke. Yeah, I guess they put pressure on uh, Mugume Yassin and uh, made it difficult for him uh, to go past him. And in the end, um, he lost control of the ball. But you think that uh, right now, there should be a sense of belief in the in Bright Stars, especially after seeing that uh, UPDF have gone a man down. Now, psychologically, you feel that Bright Stars would have a bit of um, the drive now to go for it. Uh, UPDF, on the other hand, now have also got to ensure that um, they keep themselves organized at the back. Otherwise, uh, it's just a few minutes uh, before the end of uh, the game. Very good play coming in from uh, Farid Rashid. Allowing the ball to go over the line. It's a throw in here. And looks like Swalik Pepe Seguja will be introduced. Now that's interesting. Abbas Cheyune came on as a substitute and now will be withdrawn. It doesn't look like he's injured. Yeah, I think it's uh, Branson, you know, the, the coach has decided to go with uh, a more defensive approach now because Swalik Pepe Seguja is a more tenacious uh, defensive midfielder. And uh, you look at Sebastian and who looks uh, more of an attack man. Rashid Faridi getting into the box area. Can he pick the right cross? Tries to go for the near post. Needed to do better to beat Sanon there. And the ball just goes out here for a corner. Good play. I think he just went for personal glory. He could have actually squared that ball uh, to, to one of his teammates who was making a late run into that penalty area. As opposed to trying to squeeze it um, just at that near post. I thought that just playing it over the just top, look that, just look at the far end, open that's area and the back of the goalkeeper. That's where you think that a UPDF player should have been uh, positioned to just pounce on that loose ball and just nod it into the back of the net. What a kick coming up here. A chance for Soltilo to defend as UPDF could actually seal the tie here. From the corner, whipped in towards the far end. That will be easy for the goalkeeper to just let it stroll and get a goal kick started. 90th minute. Anytime now we'll be finding out from the fourth official how many more minutes will be played in this one. Still UPDF 1, Sol Tilo Bright Stars nil. Long ball in. And there'll be no less than five minutes there as exhibited by the fourth official. 
on the attack once again. Paridi testing himself out against Gideon at all. And he will fail in this particular attempt this time round. Well, I'm sure that uh, UPDF must be feeling uh, relieved uh, seeing that that five minute board has gone on. They know that they just need uh, to keep themselves intact at the back and uh, they'll get the job done. I think they haven't done so badly this afternoon, save for the fact that yes, there have been quite a number of chances that have been created in that penalty area and had it just not been for the poor finishing of Bright Stars, Bright Stars could easily have um, had the lead even at, at this particular time. Well, interesting choice of a cross there from Kakao Mon. It's easily rebounded here by UPDF, looking now to go into ascendance. Carrying of the ball, they are coming in from Yiga, who has also had a very good game today. Going in backwards, Douglas Oyeroth to the center of the pack, still jousting on that position here. Some good play, UPDF here. Malik Bebese Gudja also getting into the fray, just holding on to the ball. Yiga there now, getting on to the ball. It's just between the two of them. Just keep rotating the ball, keep maintaining possession. Carry the ball forward. And now Bebese Gudja will try to shave off a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think that's true. And um, the plan is to keep the ball and um, run down the clock. It's a smart play. And uh, keeping it in the opponent's half, that is uh, the most ideal. Well, that wasn't the best of throws. Just uh, Saltillo Brightsters doing themselves any favors, also just knocking the ball out here for another throw. So, a couple more minutes here, shaved off. Yeah, just have about three minutes of play left. Referee says there was an offside. Yeah. Okay, it was tagging uh, coming in from Julie Gerard. He was holding on to the shot of uh, Chambadi, and that's the reason why the whistle went. That's the moment where you feel that there's going to be a little urgency from Sotiro uh, Baisal, and then the passes have got to be better. Because you don't have enough, um, a lot of time. And you've got to try and use this little time um, with uh, more purpose. Possession now for the Brightsters. Can they light a spark here to close off the game in style? Gideon brings the ball. Another wayward pass from him. <laughs> I guess um, those are the signs of um, a lost cause uh, for Brightsters because um, even when you feel that they can least afford to make mistakes, they go ahead and uh, make uh, the mistakes like Gideon just did there. Throw in from deep. Long ball up front. Look at control this one. Further forward, but that will be easy pickings for Saloni. Peter Loki. Dennis Kakaumon looks like that was a handball referee. He says play on. And now Peter Loki looking for some semblance of space. Just to get the ball back here to Kaka. Can Kaka keep it in play? Yes, he does. Now under pressure from Kamagu. Looks to cross again. Looks like it uh, snapped at the hand. This time, Fari says carry on with play. It's cleared away. Faridi. Rashidi. Ball played back here to Sanon, the goalkeeper for Saltillo Brightsters. Final 20, uh, 35 seconds or so. Long ball, brought in, trying to squeeze this one forward. Kakao Mon, setting it forward, and now the goalkeeper will have to pick this one up from the head of Bernard Mwanga. I think that should be the last bit of action, as uh, already we can see right on the ground there is Ibrahim Mwanga. will get up a few seconds. You don't think that the referee would add much uh, to the time he's added, and even. Coach has already, he's already resigned. resigned. He's suiting up here. Yeah. He's already resigned to the Feds. It's uh, it's been one of those games where he believes they probably should have uh, earned more. They just haven't been able to do so. Yeah, I'm sure he's also thinking that um, um, after the kind of opportunities that they've had, they should have scored at least from one of them. And um, his players just couldn't get the job done because they've got the opportunities, several opportunities, by the way, but they just couldn't finish them off. And um, what more can the manager do there? He's not going to walk onto the field and score the goals. The EPDF know that 
um, them taking this team out of uh, this game now that um, the game has had also to stall for a few minutes now since we um, already in excess of uh, the added time. Raheem Omana walking gingerly off the pitch as Asaf Mwebaze quite animated with his expressions and remonstrations there to assistant referee. Different mind there altogether on what he believes should have happened. Drop ball. You get the feeling we are right at the tail end of this one. In time now, the final blast from the referee's whistle should be coming through. But before that happens, there could be another chance to attack here for UPDF. Send the ball through. Seguja. Bring it on to Faridi. Rashid Farid, possession, plays the ball away, looking for support here, coming in from Kamagu. Looks like he lost that battle and considered it early. Farid will not let it go and now looking to go to the corner flag. From whence the ball will not return. Final whistle blown and it's going to be quite a question of what could have and what should have and what it turned out to be. Celebrations here for Jibril Nsimbe as his solitary goal is what earns all three points here for UPDF in this instance in what has been a match of insurmountable odds. Two red cards in there. Nelson Senkatuka will look back and wonder if he should have had a say in this evening's event. Many will believe so. Unfortunately, his boots did disagree and he wasted out on a couple of opportunities in there. Red cards for Moses Chikundu as well as Hassan Matovu sending both teams to the final line with just 10 men. At the end of the day, it's going to be heavy reflection for Saltillo Bright Stars on what has not been a bright showing out here tonight. Full time in Bombo. It is UPDF FC 1. Saltillo Bright Stars nil.